my name's Sarah. Thanks for joining me today. It is Friday the 14th of July. I had great plans for this week in terms of sewing um, and predictably they have not happened. Uh, you'll see a lot of cardboard boxes. There are boxes absolutely everywhere. We have a small house and um, we're sort of emptying things out of cupboards and everything and there's just not enough space. So it's been it's been a much less hectic week in some ways but the packing is just it just is endless why do we have so much stuff i don't know so anyway we are getting access to our storage locker uh, from this weekend so we'll be able to clear out some of the boxes that we've already packed because we're at that point where we've packed up so much but there's not really anywhere else to put the stuff we need to sort through so we're gonna take that down to the storage locker um, and then we have about two weeks before we're going to be temporarily moving out. Um, but we're away for a chunk of that. So it's all happening at once. But we're getting there. Sewing is just, I don't know, hopefully I'll get a bit of time. I've got a couple of things I've got to prioritise, which I will talk to you about later in this video. Um, but then August is wide open. I've got lots of stuff I need to do for the wedding. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to have plenty of time to hopefully get through some of my sewing plans so i did manage to sew up one thing this week that i said i would sew up which was the gift for my mum um so i decided to make her a bag for her birthday which was back in june and unfortunately fell in the middle of everything being wildly busy um so she's had a bit of a delay but i did give it to her i had planned to force her to pose for pictures but i forgot and she's now gone away for the weekend which is a shame um so yeah, so I will get pictures eventually, but basically it was the Redwood Tote, which is a noodle head pattern. So I made my own version of the Redwood Tote, which I'll pop a picture of here. But I made it in the fabric that I used to make my range backpack, which is also a noodle head pattern. So I'll put a picture of the backpack. So if you can imagine those two together, so like the shape of the tote with the fabric and notions of the backpack. That's the gift. Um and yeah i'm really i've i've bored you with my thoughts on bag making i just very much enjoy it um and i think she liked it she's a musician as well so um she's much more all-round musician than i am so i think it's a good fit for her um so yeah i was pleased with that so that was one thing i did get finished so it's ticked off my list i freed up another of my a4 uh, a3 project bags so that's great um the next thing and the thing i'm going to try to get done this week is a um one of my Minerva projects that's quite overdue I'm just gonna see if I can yeah here it is right so um you may remember I've shown this to you previously this sort of cobalt cobalt blue duchess satin which is now a bit creased from being in the bag um and I initially requested this from Minerva um to make I wanted to make a sort of like full gathered skirt and a little crop top set thing to wear to weddings um like a co-ward set um but all of my weddings happened at the same time and i i ended up going in a different direction so i didn't make it up for that and i've been umming and ahhing about what to make um because it's obviously quite a dressy fabric and i don't really have any events in mind for which it's suitable but I think I mentioned last week I was going to do a By Hand London gathered skirt, but I've slightly changed tack. So By Hand London have also very kindly sent me um, their upcoming self-drafted pattern, which is called the Lucy dress. Now, um, Elisa Lex has already posted some pictures of it on um, Instagram. So I think it's sort of out there. Um, it's being released, I believe, this week, like properly released. So um, if you don't know, so By Hand London previously did sort of traditional sewing patterns. Um, and they've recently decided to move into self-drafted patterns. I think people can be a bit funny about this. I actually love the idea of being guided through self-drafting. Um, I think if you're anyone who sometimes finds certain fit issues come up or if you sometimes can't find the style you want in your size range or whatever, being able to start working out how to draft something exactly to you seems really freeing and exciting. So I love that direction. Um, but that being said, I've been a bit scared to start. Um, I feel like I need lots of space to spread out and sort out the pattern pieces. And we just don't have that at the moment because every, we've got all these boxes everywhere. Um, 
but I had a look through the instructions the other day and actually the bodice pieces are all quite small so I'm thinking I might just try and get the bodice done obviously self-drafting a skirt is a bit easier anyway depending on what shape you would like um but yeah I'm going to even see if I can get it done before the Thursday release that may be overly optimistic but I'm going to see what I can do um so yeah so it's basically a dress it's got like a little bodice piece optional big sleeves and sort of quite a voluminous tiered skirt um I think the skirt in this fabric will obviously really hold its shape so that will be interesting I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with the skirt yet but um I'm going to commit I think to that plan so the by hand London Lucy dress um have you self drafted has anyone got experience of drafting themselves I very much I just use patterns all the time um and I always sort of toy with the self drafting thing but I just lack confidence in that area so I think this is a good way to sort of get used to the sort of premise of how it works so we'll see how I get on with that so that's my main project for this week um other plans so I have had a couple of deliveries this week um one the, the main thing that I'm going to get done after that is that my Sorrento jacket for Jenny Stitches and that's going to be very classic dark denim jacket you've got the sort of golden top stitching um and all of that so again that's a bit more of an involved project there were so many pieces to cut out oh my goodness um <laughs> so that's one thing but also I've spoken to you before about swimwear um I've wanted to make my own swimwear for a while because actually I think if you're busty getting decent swimwear is a complete pain I feel like everything's got a really low back or it's just like not got enough support um and when we're moving back in at my parents for a bit while our house is being done I'm thinking of joining just a local gym and they've got a swimming pool and I thought I need to just have a few swimsuits that I can just like whip out and go and I own one swimsuit pattern, which is the Cashmere Ipswich. Um, and the plus of that is it has an option to do a swim bra, like a wired swim bra. But I think the complexity of that has been putting me off. Um, so I've decided I need to make something more simple first, just to get over my fear. Uh, and I've decided to go for the Megan Nielsen Cottesloe Curve swimsuit. So I'll pop a picture here. It's basically a super simple shape which is why I thought it's probably the best place to start. Um, I had a look at the hashtag and there were lots of nice options on lots of different body types. And I just thought that seems, I seem, I feel less scared of that. So I think that's a good place to start. Um, I've ordered some swim fabric from Fabric Godmother. They have recently had a drop of uh, dead stock stuff. So I've ordered some fancy Liberty fabric they had the plus being obviously liberty fabric's expensive but you actually don't need very much of it for a swimsuit um and then i've also ordered they had like a nice textured green one which was a lot cheaper so i've ordered that to make my sort of trial run um and i also have some that i ordered ages ago from hey so sister so i should should have a bit of choice uh to play around with and i ordered linings also today some of the notions i ordered turned up so it's recommended that you sew with Maraflex thread, which is the stretchy thread. So you can see it's got the yellow top from Gutterman. Um, I've got some swim elastic, the rubber swim elastic. And I also bought some power mesh. Now I've actually got probably too much power mesh. It's like quite a lot of power mesh here. Um, but it reminded me as well of the other thing I've been too scared to do, but have everything for, is making underwear it's making bras and i came across when i was clearing out this lovely box of goodies that i received from jesse kind who is um a lovely creative beautiful person on instagram and she had a d stash um from when she used to make lingerie ages ago and she sent me all of these lovely supplies and i'd sort of forgotten about them so there's some elastics and then it's all these very pretty laces so there's like this one which has, I don't know if you can see, like a really beautiful scalloped edge. Um, there's this nice light pink one with the roses. There's this white one. Now, I like this one because it's sort of um, the lace pattern, I think, is very, it's a bit like Art Deco-y, the lace pattern. 
um and then also this lovely deeper sort of it's a, it's a deep pink or deep red hmm. but she sent me those and she sent me some power mesh so i have like all of these supplies and i'm just thinking like sarah get a grip sew yourself some nice undies do you know what i mean so um at some point over the summer i'm hoping to have a bit of time i mean i'm not going to be flashing my undies on youtube or the gram because nobody needs to see that um i might show you them like just held up versions but i always find like underwear like bras for like busty ladies look really quite funny without boobs in because they're just like enormous do you know what i mean um <laughs> so we'll see we'll see how it turns up but that's something that I've been thinking. The swimwear is definitely going to be a priority. I'm hoping it'll be quite quick to get sewn up as well. Um, and yeah, and I and I hope then I'll then feel a bit more adventurous in the styles that I might be up for making. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the plans. I also heard from a lovely friend of mine this week who I was at uni with. We actually were in... This is going to sound weird. We were in a play... It was like a, a play about people putting on a musical and we played the two lead parts in the musical. So it's like a play within a play. And the musical that the people in the play were putting on was about Richard and Judy. So for anyone who's not in the UK, Richard and Judy were sort of daytime TV hosts. They were a married couple. I would say if you know what Hun culture is, I would say at the time they were sort of ultimate Hun culture. Um... And yeah, the premise is that there's this production company and they're putting on this musical about Richard and Judy and you get excerpts of these songs from the Richard and Judy musical and um, they were spoofs. They were like plays on famous um, songs from musical theatre. So there was like a version of Belle from Beauty and the Beast, but it was called Judy. Um, there was, what else? There, Defying ITV instead of Defying Gravity for when they left ITV. Um, <laughs> there were loads and loads of them. There was... Um, you say come play you say we pay which was instead of life as a cabaret um so yeah it was good fun and uh anyway my friend joe played richard and i was judy and joe now has a fabulous one man drag show and we'd been in contact recently anyway because we're doing a gig together later in the year um which is going to be amazing i can't wait um but he then said i want this accessory for my show and I didn't know if you would be able to make it and I think with outfits I'm a bit scared of making them for other people because I just find it kind of stressful and it's a lot of work and I think it's a big commitment and it's difficult to ask for the amount of money that it actually costs in time but this accessory I was like I can make this no worries so I'm not going to give anything away because I don't know if he wants to give anything away but um all of the materials for that turned up today as well and hopefully once this gets to him and he's used it and it's photographed I'll be able to share some pictures um, with you. So, yeah, so that's another exciting little thing that happened this week. And just something different to try, right? Something different. So the one other thing I had to show you was, as you know, work has been absolutely crazy. I've cut back on buying fabric generally, and I've cut back on um, my subscription box. I got rid of that. Um, but I did the other day treat myself. I just got to a point where I was like, I've worked so hard. I've paid my tax bill. Um, I just wanted to treat myself to a little bit of fabric just because I liked it. Um, and I did, and it arrived today. So this is, again, it's from Fabric Godmother. Um, and it's this gorgeous sort of sun, what would you call it? Like a tiled sun motif. There you go, I'll that off you. Now, I just love the colours. I think they're really unusual. Um, it's an unusual combination, but I really like the sort of purple and the blue and then this what do you call it like a sort of dark or khaki or like an olive color dark olive color and the orange I just think it's really lush and I was just thinking maybe Lux PJs maybe Lux PJs um and so I just treated myself to it whatever what's the use of working all the hours under the sun if you can't treat yourself occasionally um <laughs> so at the moment I'm weighing up I want to make some nice pajamas for the morning of our wedding and um, I, I, I really flip flop back and forth between being like, this is the one time in your life you can get away with wearing white all the time. Bear in mind, I don't wear a lot of white because I'm a very messy person. Um, 
but then realistically i'm like do i really want white pajamas i don't know that i do and also i got some fabric um fairly cheaply that i thought i could make pajamas with but a lot of the white fabrics need lining and i'm just thinking like i don't really want lined pajamas so i've been thinking maybe i'm gonna make something a bit more colorful so something like that i think would be cute and then i might have like a, i've got some fabric to make a robe over the top that's um sort of an ivory color so that's an option um i'd probably use the closet core carolyn caroline pajama pattern for that um but yeah we'll see we finally anyone who's followed along i've only had this channel since october i think october last year we got engaged september the year before that so when we got engaged there were 770 days between the day we got engaged and our wedding date and we finally yesterday were down to double digits so 99 days yesterday until our wedding um and it's just i'm really excited actually to be honest there's just a lot there's a lot to do but i don't feel stressed in like I'm not currently regretting anything like I'm not thinking we should have done it smaller or we should have done this differently or that differently um I'm really excited for the whole wedding to be honest but I do feel that like there's slight pressure in the background just to get things done so I'm just trying to tick them off um and I just want to make sure that the things I want to make that I have time to make them so I'm going to limit the other things I commit to so um I've been approached about a few pattern test things recently I've said no to all of them so far so um I don't think I'll be doing pattern tests I don't think I'll be doing um I'm going to try not to overcommit to my brand ambassadorship things um Minerva is the easiest one to overcommit to because they come to you every single month whereas um with Jenny we can you do a project and then you have a bit of time to work on it and then when you're ready for the next you just go to her and say I'm ready for the next one um so it's a bit easier to keep in control of it whereas with Minerva I get a bit backed up so I'm going to stop taking Minerva projects just for a couple of months I think until I can get my two that I've got sewn up and then make sure that the wedding stuff is just front and centre uh anyway as usual I've babbled on I always say I've got nothing to say and then you can't shut me up uh so I hope everyone's had a good week I really enjoyed uh hearing from you all last week so please feel free to comment below let me know what you've been working on have you sewn swimwear have you done self-drafted patterns? Have you sewn lingerie? Any of that, I'm really interested to hear about. And um, yeah, just have a great week. And I will see you hopefully next Friday. I'm actually just thinking about it, traveling down. I've got a concert in Devon next weekend. So um, I'm traveling down for that. So I may or may not film on Friday, but maybe I can film the day before, who knows. Anyway, have a great week guys, see you later, bye.